Welcome back. This is Lesson 12.7 Journal, Effects of Outliers. I will be able to identify outliers in a data set. I will also understand how outliers affect the measures of center. Vocabulary for this lesson, data, we know is information gathered, multiple pieces of information gathered about the same thing. Cent measure of center, kind of measures where the typical data value would be found. Mean is the mathematical average where we add it up and divide by how many there are. Median is the one in the middle when they're in order from least to greatest. Mode is the one that you see the most, the most repeated. The range is the distance or difference from the highest number to the lowest number in a data set. Outlier is the new one where you're going to be adding. This is the last vocabulary word we're adding. So this is at the bottom of the second page. An outlier is a data point that is extremely high or low compared to the rest of the data set. So it's way different from the rest. Either way higher or way lower, but it's kind of an oddball out there compared to everybody else. So that's what an, I like to put oddball. All right. So let's look at this example. A tech CEO earns $300,000 per year. He has nine employees that earn $40,000 per year. Find the mean, median, and mode of the data set. Okay, you're going to want your calculator for this one. So we have one CEO and nine employees. So how many total people are there? So we've got 40,000, nine times. And one at 300,000, right? So we have 10 pieces of data. So if I were to organize this, I could do 40,000 plus 40,000 nine times, or to save us time, 40,000 times nine. That gives us 360,000 plus the CEO that gives us 300,000. So that gives us 600,000, si sorry, 60, $660,000 total. So the mean, we're adding them all up, which is getting us 660,000. Zero, zero, zero. And then we're gonna divide that by 10 because there are 10 people at the company. And that means the average is $66,000 earned at that company. Okay, the median, if we were to write these all out, this one's going to be on the very end. 40,000 is going to be on the bottom, and the rest are going to be 40,000. That means 40,000 is going to be the middle two. So our median is going to be 40,000. And our mode would be 40,000 because it's the most repeated here. So look at what the tech CEO did. His wage, when you put it in with the other nine employees, it makes it look like the average person at the company earns $66,000 a year. However, Knowing what we know is that truly describe the center. So it says here, which of these measures of center truly describe the typical center of the salaries earned for this tech company? Well, most everybody except the CEO earns $40,000. So the median and the mode show that most employees earn 40,000 a year. So 
So if this company were to advertise that the average salary for the company was $66,000, are they technically lying? No, they're not lying. That was the average. But how would this be, be misleading if you were interested in a job there? Aren't you thinking that you're going to go in and earn about $66,000 a year if that's the average? How would this be misleading? Most everyone except the CEO earns 40000 a year. You might think you might you would get sixty six thousand a year. So what is it that makes this mean look misleading? Well, it's because of that CEO salary in there. When we added them all together, remember how we did 40,000 times 9? That was just barely over what the CEO made himself. So the outlier changed the mean. The outlier made the mean look huge. So because of the outlier, the mean can be affected to be not near where most of the other data is. So, this is an outlier. It was way larger than the other salaries in the company. So, I want you to know that when there is an outlier, the median is a better choice is a better representation of the center. If there is a lot of repetition in the data, which in this case there also was, right? We had a lot of repetition. Everybody else's salary was 40,000. If there's a lot of repetition in the data, then the mode may be the most accurate representation of where the center is. So I want you to be able to know what outliers do and which measure of center would be best. Now, the mean is the most common one we use. If there's no outlier and not a lot of repetition in one area, the mean is probably the best one for us to use. So we're going to look at our data sets and we're going to decide which would be best and why. So looking at these number sets, we have a, um, actually, Let's organize these just so we can see it better. So we have eight, looks like my lowest number, then nine, 10, 13, 14, 15, 17, 21, and then 62. So look at all this. When they're organized, it's a lot easier to see if you have an outlier or not. 8 to 21, that spans all of what? A little over 10 numbers. Then all of a sudden it jumps to 62. That, my friend, would be an outlier. That, my friend, would be an outlier. So, because of the outlier, I don't see any repetition in this one. So that tells me that the median would be best. Why the outlier, because it's a big outlier, the outlier would make the average, the mean look much larger. Okay, let's look at this data set. Our lowest one here is 321. Next lowest looks like 683, 
931. Okay. When they're organized, it's a lot easier to recognize an outlier. So look at this. Between 321 and 683, that's a jump of over, over 300. Here there's a jump of 10, a jump of 30, a jump of 70. And this one jumps up about 100. But because of that, this one right here is going to be an outlier. So once again, there's no repetition here. So the median would be best. Because this time, the outlier would make the outlier would make the mean lower than center. Okay, let's put these in order from least to greatest. We have two, three, Four, four, six, six, seven, and eight. Now there is some repetition here, but not a lot. The numbers aren't that spread out from each other in comparison. So see how these jump a lot, but they're bigger numbers? These are relatively close together. That tells me the mean is best. We always like the mean first. We just throw it out if there's an outlier. So the mean, because the data has no outliers. And not a lot of repetition. All right, let's look at this one. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 ones. Then, let's see, we used to follow ones. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Then we have a 2. We have a 3. A 5. Another five, seven, and an eight. Oh, two sevens, and then an eight. So in this case, mean would probably be okay because there's not an outlier, but mode might also be extra appropriate to note. Why would that be? because this one has a lot of repeating ones. But because they're not all that crazy spaced out from each other, the mean is probably also appropriate. And no outliers. What stands out about this one is all those ones that repeat themselves. All right, let's do this last one. So we have four, five. Let's see what's next. Smallest, 29 maybe. Nope, 19. 22. 22. I use that one. 29 would be next. 33. Let's see, 47, then we have 62, 73, 87, and 91. All right, so looking at these numbers, it spans from 4 all the way up to 91. But from 91 to 87 is not very far. 87 to 73, these are more spaced out. But that doesn't mean that they, either of these are an outlier. 
91 is not very far away from 87 or 73. 4 and 5 are not that far from 19 compared to the others. So these, because they're spaced farther apart, but they're all fairly spaced apart, this means we don't have an outlier. Unlike up here, these are all within 5 or 6 of each other, and then bam, we jump up to 62, which is 40 away. That's definitely an outlier. This one here, this is quite the jump, but this one was way bigger of a jump from 321 to 683, which is why that's considered an outlier there. These ones are all relatively, there's some jumps in there, but your highest value and lowest value aren't that crazy different from any of the others. So that would make this, the mean would be best. Okay, there's no outlier. And, or repetition. All right, rate yourself on this concept, 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4. Take a picture and turn it in on Google Classroom.